Sup, Nerd Amigos. I'm the Jive Talking Nerd, John Norgrove, and this is Nerd Jive. So, again, shooting for those short videos this week because i got a shitload of stuff to do, and I actually have people over right now, which you may or may not be able to hear in the background. I don't really know how well that thing picks up. So, first up is Strato Launch news. So, if you don't know what the Strato Launch is, this is the Strato Launch. So, it's the world's largest aircraft. It has six massive turbofan engines, and they were tested recently, like within this last week. Uh, so they went through this three-stage uh, testing called a dry, wet, and idle test. So first, you use a supplementary uh, power source to charge the engines, essentially spin them up to see that they spin smoothly. That's called a dry test. Then you progress towards a wet test, which is a, a wet motor test, where you introduce fuel to the engines. Uh, so you spin it up dry, then you introduce fuel and let the engine start to generate a little bit of spin on their own, right? Then you shut it all down. And then your last test, which is an idle test, is shut it all the way down, let it cool, right? And then you start the engines up, but individually, one at a time, you start each engine up, so it goes through its full startup cycle, as well as rests at idle. And you monitor its vibrations, frequencies, um, and like airflow and things like that at idle and then you shut it down uh, and then take all that information and analyze it to make sure the engines are running properly. So all six of these turbofan engines went through the uh, three-stage uh, engine test and they all passed with flying colors uh, which is really good news because it puts the strata launcher back on course towards flight. So originally it was set to start its t first test flights this year or uh, last year in 2016 but it has been continually pushed back and 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 having problems and so there it's a kind of a good news that there's that they're starting to do this again although we don't currently or at least i have not seen any information on when inevitably it's going to start uh launching or uh test flying i mean but so a uh, little history on the company so the company was founded by paul allen uh, with the idea of low cost space launches so the uh, strata launcher would have a rocket booster set inside of it and you fly that up to to as high as it can go right to its shelf and then you drop the booster out and the booster takes off which means you don't have to waste rocket fuel getting that you know that first whatever 40 50 thousand feet it's only after that uh you also don't have to deal with wasting fuel for gravity turns and things like that it's uh it's an interesting concept uh i don't know if it's really gonna pay off in the long run because obviously you've seen them have a ton of setbacks but for small things like nano satellites and micro satellites and things like that it'll probably end up working so uh their uh, the strato launch is building the aircraft and the rockets are actually coming from orbital atk which we talked about yeah uh monday yesterday monday whatever so orbital atk was recently purchased by northrop grumman if you did not watch yesterday's video go and watch it uh so it's kind of interesting because strato launch is finally starting to get back into the motions of being able to fulfill contractual obligations to orbital atk but orbital atk was just recently purchased by another company so it'll be interesting to see uh, is Northrop Grumman going to continue on this quest with Strata Launch? Are they going to void the contracts and pay whatever fines and debts that are needed? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where uh, Orbital ATK and Strata Launch sort of land in the post Northrop Grumman purchase, um, you know, playing field, as it were. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where the contracts and partnerships for these companies go. But uh, all right, so science, science stuff out of the way i have more tv show and movie news I, I know i've been really focusing on it but this is the kind of stuff that's super interesting to me so okay ghosted is going to be uh premiered on twitter of all places all right so upcoming fox horror comedy movie ghosted tv show i mean ghosted uh is starring craig robinson and adam scott you you should recognize them if you don't that's fucking idiot um so it will be streamed nightly at 9 p.m i believe west coast time on twitter from september 21st through september 24th this is a full week before its premiere launch date on fox cable television on fox network which is october 1st so it's it, the show looks super super interesting it looks super funny it's super entertaining it's sort of like uh this men in black uh, Shaun of the Dead, 
uh, like Ghostbusters y kind of thing, but where the like the main characters don't really know what they're do what they're doing and stuff like that. I mean, both Adam Scott and, and Craig Robinson are absolutely hilarious, so that's gonna be uh, fantastic. But uh, it, the actually more interesting thing to me is this partnership between Fox and Twitter. So we sort of need to ask ourselves what kind of things the f the future holds in the in this content in this new content space you know w would it be beneficial like if this is a success would it be beneficial for fox to premiere all of their shows like this live streaming on twitter before moving to tv if star trek were to do this and then say like all right you you saw the first episode now the first episode is going to come out and the rest of the episodes are going to come out on our stupid stupid ass streaming service right then maybe it's like all right i got a taste I can go over here. How many people are wire cutters, don't have cable? Like, I pay for cable, but that's for wrestling and football. Uh, but, like, there's a lot of sort of where the market's going to head. We can see that that Amazon and, and Netflix and, and Hulu and all these are so fucking successful, right? So... Is Twitter trying to move in this space? You see that YouTube launched YouTube TV. I don't 100% know what the fuck that is, but whatever the hell that is, uh, like, you know, they have YouTube Red, which is exclusive content. So it's like, you can get regular YouTube content, but you can also get this exclusive YouTube Red content. So it's going to be interesting to see where this partnership between Fox and Twitter sort of leads. And, you know, maybe we get one and it's out. Or maybe we get a lot more content in this direction and Twitter becomes this weirdly, like, this... Twitter becomes this like gateway drug for new TV series or possibly even testing pilots before you get signed on for a whole series which would in my opinion be very beneficial where you can you can watch that test and go out. Twitter's a huge base, it's super easy to work with, so like why not? And I know the NFL has streamed some football games through Twitter before and I think I think I watched a little Olympics through Twitter the last time the Olympics were on also, maybe. So there's like, Twitter's been doing the streaming game for a while and I think they know what they're doing. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Plus, Ghosty looks hilarious. Like, fucking watch that trailer. Shit is hilarious. But, alright, so next up is zombie Christmas news. So I'm pretty excited about this. I found this trailer, like, purely by happenstance on YouTube today, right? Uh, for this movie called Anna and the Apocalypse, and it looks amazing. So it's this combination between like Shaun of the Dead and High School Musical, which sounds dumb, I know, but it's it, it, it looks really good. It looks like it's delivering really well with that like classic British style humor. It's based on this 2010 BAFTA winning short called the Zombie Musical, uh, which I watched and is super fucking funny. Um, uh, I have the uh, the trailer for Anna and the Apocalypse link below, and I also have the the uh, BAFTA short zombie musical link below, so watch both of those. Uh, but I just kind of like the idea of like this new approach to horror movies, this musical zombie singing and dancing numbers kind of thing. The trailer's a really good example of that, but uh, it looks it looks real it looks uh, real fucking funny. And I can't wait for that to happen. And while we're speaking on horror -y stuff, 30 Days of Halloween starts, I don't know, 21 days. I have no, many, no clue how many days September has. 20, 21, I don't care. But so, wife and I will be watching and reviewing a horror movie every day during October. So join us. Uh, let us know what you think of the movies. Comment about those. If you ha know of a good horror movie, tell us and maybe we will watch and review that one i mean obviously we're going to watch some classics we're also going to try to watch some new stuff but so that's our goal i have already set up a playlist and i have that link below and i'll, I'll pimp that out once october starts hitting us but uh every day new horror movie new review they're gonna be real short like less than three minutes like less than five minutes like three minute reviews just like yes it was good no it was bad wow it was campy or hey i haven't seen this in 10 years and jesus christ it's not nearly as good as i thought it once was but Either way, I'm hungry, and I haven't drank nearly enough, so I've been John Norgrove. This has been Nerd Jive. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's see if I got those right, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay nerdy.